Scotty Scheffler did it again, winning the Masters two out of the last three years. And as soon as he won the Masters, I got flooded with texts from my students asking, how does this man hit the golf ball so consistently to win majors with that motion? And remember, everyone you see on television are freaks of nature. They find a way to make it work. But today, we're going to diagnose his cause and effect. Look at how he makes a swing work to give you a better understanding that all golf swings are unique. And do me a favor, don't try and copy the swing. You might hurt yourself. And if you do like this type of content, hit that like, share, subscribe and drop a comment let me know what you feel about scotty's win will he win more majors and how long do you think he can keep this up but enough of that let's go check out why scotty was able to win the masters we have scotty on the screen now scotty is a taller gentleman standing at six foot three 200 pounds so he has some weight behind that height and he utilizes very efficiently and what's cool to look at look at all those divots that's like a perfect divot pattern so for all my amateurs out there try and hit divots like this it makes the maintenance crew very happy and it's a lot easier to maintain but let's look at these lines so we're going to start on the left side screen first and we're going to look at where that ball position is relative to his shoulder tilt and you can see it's slightly off center off of his right pec now if we do 90 degrees based on his shoulder tilt we can see where that ball position is connected to the shoulder tilt which is off his right shoulder and he does have a premature forward press which is something i don't advise that we do at home and what we're trying to discuss here is center of his chest we're going to draw a straight line 90 degrees from that and so his hands are behind his center and his golf ball is even further behind that so he is starting already with a forward press so basically he is connecting to his lead shoulder now the positive thing about this is our power band so inside this triangle that is formed by the green and orange that is a power band and that he has to carry down into the golf ball the narrower you can get that power band the easier it is to strike the golf ball for our amateurs but the professionals can widen that power band because they do a better job of staying connected but without confusing too much let's delete some of these lines and we're going to keep that 90 degree angle because that is going to play a key part in where he is at that point on his downswing to carry down the angle so on the left side let's just keep going back to the midway point and what we can see here is we can see a nice one piece takeaway essentially take that triangle and keeping it out in front of him so the hands are still inside of the center of the chest and he's just turning around that yellow brace line and the right side of the screen let's just start with taking a look at the setup and if we draw it from the arches of the heels straight up to the sky we can see that his x where the lower plane line and the spine angle fall into it is slightly forward which means his x is right of that center line now what is this going to do is it's going to lower up his weight towards his toes now typically when we have weight low towards the toes i've seen multiple things occur from this one is a higher swing plane number two is fighting that and getting the weight towards the heels and let's take a look at what he does on his way back and i don't see much compensation with his body i do see the left shoulder tilt getting a little bit higher initially but the turn is what keeps his hands right on that lower plane line and the club face is relatively close to the spine angle we do see him staying on his toes look at the heels how they actually work their way up slightly so there you can see he's loading into his toes now from this point on he corrects his shoulders but it's not quite enough shoulders have lost some tilt now when you lose tilt this will lower your arms so we can see his arms have not quite reached that yellow secondary plane line they are falling short so what does he tend to do he tends to start to lean into the target to get his hands to raise up higher now back to the left side let's take a look at that motion and we can see right about here is where he feels the hands need to work higher so one way to do that is to start to tip towards the target to get the hands to raise up slightly higher but what we can see is he's carrying a beautiful angle at the top his club is nowhere near parallel relative to his shoulder turn and we can see how much shoulder turn he actually has he is slightly past 90 degrees and if you look at the club shaft it is nowhere near to perpendicular to his shoulder tilt and turn so this is a really good connected backswing his arms have slightly veered off further right to help him get his hands a little bit higher and what i mean is if we draw a triangle we can see that his hands dead center would be out in front but to get those hands to go higher to that secondary plane line this is where he had a slight disconnection of his hands relative to his power source so now let's stay with the left side of the screen and look at that first move so what we're going to do is take a look at where the ball position is relative to his body so we can see that a majority of his upper body is left meaning 
against this way to the ball position. So if he were to just stay there, he could still strike the golf ball. But because he went back and because he started this upper body tilting towards the target to help him get his hands on that secondary plane line, he has to undo this motion. And to help us, we're going to draw a line from his left heel straight up to the sky. And that is your impact line. So let's look at how the body moves over towards that impact line. We start that downswing. We see his upper body lean. Now he gets his hips to actually strike that impact line first. Most modern day players will get their knee to strike that impact line first and the upper body will stay slightly further back. But the key is, is we now have a hip tilt that is down at the ground at this point. So now we have to counteract that hip tilt. So from this position, on we can see the right side is going to straighten up and drive to allow the hip tilt to work the other way which will then force the upper body to be back to where it needs to be so that creates a lot of lower body lunging and tilting to accommodate that but that leaves us in some trouble so let's back it up a bit so you see i'm going to leave it here and this is important because remember where the golf ball was connected on his shoulder tilt so his hands have already reached that connection and he basically has a few frames to get the golf club from here to strike the golf ball so he's carrying this angle down for as long as he can now the problem is is look at his ball position relative to his body look at how much of the body is over that golf ball position Based on where his position is now, his golf ball should be there and then he will be able to carry that angle much further and strike the golf ball more with his body rotation. But he is, has to limit the body rotation at impact to allow his hands and arms to catch up slightly. Notice how the body is already moved over. The body has very limited rotation at this point, but the hands now have to start to throw slightly to get that golf ball. But he does this very efficiently. It's not a overthrow. You don't see the hands scooping as he is still getting a forward shaft lean as he strikes it and relative to his spine angle which is set by the shoulder tilt at the top based on the hips driving you can see how all this works out now he is still able to carry a forward press into the golf ball and now what we'll see is we'll see the body turn a lot more. Now he's making up for the lack of turn before impact and he, now he can turn and this turn allows him to not throw the hands because the hands will need a clearer path. So from this point on, he will rotate, he will move off his right foot. We call that the Scheffler shuffle. And we can see here, look at this triangle. It is well connected to the center of his chest. So this is where he winds up, which is a phenomenal position, but with an accentuated shoulder tilt and the complete rotation and we can see the hands are still haven't budged from this point on so from impact on he has one of the best moves in golf but in order to get there he has to do a little bit of compensation based on that ball position setup and the way he has to get his hands to that secondary plane line now let's take a look at the down the line to piece this together so we are at the top now we can see that he is still forward of his centeredness based on his feet and let's do a quick triangle check here and we have to do this in our favorite barney purple and once we get that triangle check, we can see that the arms are much higher than they need to be based on his body set makeup. That triangle is pointing straight down. So he has some compensatory motion to make this swing effective. As he moves, those arms fall right down and they move slightly right. But this is okay because when he moves his arms slightly right, we know based on previous cause and effects that will cause steepness and potentially a path left. But watch what he does with his right elbow. His right elbow is going to tuck in slightly more, bring that club shaft to the plane. But it is still slightly steep because if we draw a line straight down, we can see that that is above the golf ball. So what needs to happen? Remember the drive from the left side where he has to really drive that left hip forward to allow his upper body to fall back. This motion will allow allow that right shoulder to drop down further and increase the shoulder tilt at impact and when you do that your club head can now find that lower plane line quicker so here he is good to go look at the shaft it goes right through his right forearm which is picture perfect and once we get down to impact look at the hips the hips stop turning because now he's driving to the left side we see evidence of the drive look at the right foot it actually works towards the back left heel that's the driving of the body out the way to clear the path for the arms and hands and now watch the right foot is going to shuffle back to the front and that shuffling back to the front is the body turning like we saw to make sure he stays connected we see a great exit path we see the hands slightly lower than when they need to be but they work 
their way around and take a look at this and this is something that i'm really trying to get a lot of my amateurs to understand is the position past impact and if we take a look barney purple is going to make his appearance again look at that well past impact guess what it matches it matches your spine angle the hands and arms try to work as close to a perpendicular line as they can while the club shaft works on the same line as your spine angle that is one of the magic moves that he has and he's able to build it more impressively in a compensatory motion so this is why it is not ideal to try and copy swings because they're so manufactured even the top in the world if you change one thing about Scotty's golf swing or setup, his whole golf swing will collapse. So be very careful what you apply to your golf swing. Hope this makes sense. Sorry about all the lines, but sometimes you get a little carried away. But if you do like this, hit that like, share, and subscribe. It really means a lot to us, but I'll see you next time. Ferris and Greens.